Okay, so how's everybody doing? So what I want to show you in this tutorial is how to build a simple HVAC or air conditioner for the roof of your building. Um, I mean, how many times do we build a model and we just forget about the roof? We put a chimney on there or a little stack. But, you know, a lot of buildings, most nowadays anyway, and way back, uh, had air conditioners, right? So what I do is just find an image on Google Images or whatever and just download it. Black and white color, doesn't matter. Just find one that you like. And then this is made from pennies, scrap. And all it is is a box with some trim on it and some evergreen, like a piece of tubing there. And just scrap, really, right, with some louvers, like a clapboard. That's just clapboard for N scale in this case because this is a HO scale HVAC. And what I want to do is just show you how I built this, okay? and how I painted it and how easy this is to build. They're really simple, okay? And they look fantastic when they're built. And you can have a unique one for your building that's unique as well, okay? Okay, so how's everybody doing? So in this uh, particular segment or episode, I want to show you how I go about scratch building a simple air conditioner, which is a common um, subject for uh, industrial buildings, etc., commercial buildings. Okay, so I'm going to show you the tools and materials that I use to build something like this. Now this image is just, I just Googled this, rooftop air conditioners, and I just picked this one and, and printed it off. So it seems like a good prototype to model from. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'll show you, I just did a sort of a warm up piece last night in O, o scale, or rather, uh, this would be more, I mean, it could be HO on a really large commercial building, but for the diner, uh, I think it'll probably be just a little bit too big. So I'm going to show you how I prep and uh, build a smaller one like this. Um, see the grills here? That's just clapboard siding. That's all it is. I use the same for, um, you know, louvered vents, which is number 4041 clapboard. And uh, while I'm talking about this, I'll just lay the parts out here so you can see. These are the supplies that I'm going to use to build the air conditioner with. Now, obviously, you wouldn't go buy all of this just to build one of these because this is all from scrap. Like, you can't, this is five cents worth of plastic or 10 cents worth. But this is all accumulated product, uh, you know, that a scratch builder requires over time or already has. Like, somebody asked me, what's a good place to start? A good place to start is to get all the basic sheets, like the different thicknesses, 10 thou, 15 thou, 20 thou, 30 thou, 40 thou, because you can always cut strip from 10 thou, or 15 or 20 if you want, a big strip. And it goes on and on, like Evergreen has every single product, like real world profile, pretty much in the same sort of one to one scale uh, idea to build with. Right, the same kind of uh, materials, raw, uh, not raw materials, uh, manufactured materials are available in evergreen plastic as well. So you can basically uh, build anything, anything you want. Uh, you can even do domes with evergreen plastic if you just build up a crude vacuum form. I've done it hundreds of times. You know, you build a crude vacuum form, especially if you have electric element hot plate with a hinge. You just put it between two plates, it melts, it bowls down, like it sags down, you put it and turn the vacuum on in the box and you just roll it over the part that you shape. It makes a great vacuum form part. But anyway, that's for another time. But um, 
so you can build anything you want from evergreen plastic from scratch okay so this is what i'm going to use okay okay so you can just see the tools that i have here pencil obviously a little square an HO scale ruler, uh, a standard metric ruler. I like the metric is for the smaller increments, but I use standard as well. Okay, a number 11 blade is all you really need. Uh, sanding stick or Revlon nail files. The only problem with the nail files, like they're good for curving and for doing small parts, but uh, I like the stick because it's rigid, right? And I can slide it along a surface and square things up, hold it on flat on the bench, and this is thick enough it's three eighths that it'll stand upright at a right angle all the time that's why i like to build or make these up and i've shown how to make these it's just plywood strips cut with laid on a sheet of upside down sandpaper with white carpenter's glue just line them all up glue them down put a weight on it when they're dry knife them out and then flip them over and put a different grit the same way on the other side like i've had these since the beginning of river road so and they're still good so they'll last the whole project. Okay, uh, you're gonna need drill bits, right? So those of you that are just starting out, uh, these are cheap ones, very, very cheap, but uh, they break if you blow on them the wrong way, right? I find these Godhead ones, uh, they break too, but you gotta be pretty, pretty rough with them. But I've broken a few of the smaller ones. And then this is a little diamond drill bit from Dremel which is a must-have it's it's shaped like a almost like a step drill and it's just fantastic for honing out an oddball size hole I find like just with your hand like that okay so I really like those and that's their a set by Godham which is probably the the, the one you're gonna need for sure and then they've got some other ones I got this C set and it's one one point one millimeter to one point nine which I like quite a bit as well and these are really tough they got the heavy five mil shank on them okay so you're going to need those and then of course you're going to need a mandrel for them uh okay so each to his or her own when you use plastic weld but remember when you're using plastic you want to weld it okay do not use ca to glue plastic with unless you're in a pinch unless you have to do it if it's a painted part or a metal to plastic or wood to plastic, then yeah, for sure, right? But you want to have the integrity of a weld. This is the recommended solvent, like not just plastruct, but plastic weld. Because what it does is it creates a chemical bond. It melts the plastic like, like steel weld would. And you wouldn't believe, like you could glue a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter sprue on the edge of this with and if you weld it and you could flick it back and forth with your finger like that if, if it's welded properly but if you try to do that with the same thing like just say you wanted to glue this onto the end like that with ca we all you have to do is flick it once and shear it's going to snap right off right but if you do that with plastic weld as you flick it's just going to bend right it's not going to snap off I mean, you will, but you can break it off eventually, but it's going to bend and flex because it's welded. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, tweezers and, you know, whatever your tools are. Okay, so this is number 4041 clapboard. It's the really smaller profile stuff that I like to use for louvered vents, etc. Works really good, right? And what I've done here is, is I've described uh, the parts. So... I decided that I would just make this air conditioner a little bit smaller than this one. Like this one I kind of measured out at 8 feet or something. But it came out at 9 feet by the time I packed it out, right? Okay. So I am I just began cutting these ones at about 5 feet. So these are scribes, so I'm just going to snap those off. So I've got some parts to build a rectangular box, okay? And the reason why I'm going to build a rectangular box with these, I'm just going to skin over part of it. Like this louvered, like the louvered part is going to represent this and this. 
And, you know, you can put a plate on top like that and then run a dowel there if you want to add that detail. Or you can use a quarter round as well, okay? But I'm just going to show you some of the basic uh, construction methods. It's just so simple and, and applies to larger models, right? Like, it's all rectangles and squares, really, the majority of structures, right? So everything that I show or build all has relevance to other subject matter in one way or another. Um, I hope you see that because that's really what it is, right? Like, let me just point this out here. Like, here's a little relay box right here. See that with this conduit pipe going down with the plate into the roof? So I just made that up with this. See? So that's just like uh, 30 thou rod, okay? With just some uh, 20 thou by 20 thou by 80 thou strip piece drilled a hole, slipped that in. That's not glued in because I want to be able to adjust it to the roof because it's a plate that sits down on the tar paper roof or whatever. And then this is just two or three pieces of different strip or scrap just built up to look like a relay box with a little tiny strip glued on the side. That's it. Like you can't even, like that's a penny to build that. Right? It took me like five or ten minutes to build that up. So a, an example would be this would go, you know, like on the side like that. This part here. Okay. So I can use this for a smaller one as well. I mean, it's all relative, right? Like some relay boxes are big, some are small. And then for the vent, like instead of using, because I don't have a fan, I don't want to use this fan. It's a bit too big for HO for what I want right now. I just cut a piece of tubing. So that's going to be my top. And bottom piece. So I'll just glue that on as a fan on the top. I can just paint that in or put a piece of this over top, build a square one. They have round photo etch, like there's two different round sizes, right? Okay. So I use a little piece of parchment paper. Okay, and just so that it won't stick to the to the base, and I just give them a little bit of a rub. Forgive me for those that already know this, but there are burgeoning modelers that need to see this, and we need to bring them along in the scratch builders community because we want to set them free, right? Set the modeler free by showing how it's done, and then the sky's the limit for them. Okay, so I'm going to just glue like uh, just glue this joint together like this so this is going to make a right a right angle wall just like that so some of you that have jigs and so on you can use the jig box i don't bother so i can just it's all i need is a square so so i build two of these Okay, so here's the little rectangular box. And usually what I do is I just paint the inside of the corner a bit, like that, while I'm gluing it up. And then, you know, press down, press down. Just you want to squeeze that joint tight, gently. It helps square it up a bit. And before you know it, like you're pretty much ready to, to uh, you know, to glue that up. So I'm going to uh, just lay the bottom piece on here now. Okay. And it's going to be flush, right? So I'm not worried about uh, it. Like I want it to be oversized a little bit. Remember I talked about that? Like, let me just show you. So 
you get the feel of the solvent um, when you use it enough where you can actually use it to create actual ripples with 10 thou. Like you ever try laying 10 thou with lots of solvent, it'll do a kind of a rippling effect. Like if you're doing sheet metal or something, you can do really cool effects. But we don't want that for this. But I'm just gonna glue that on the bottom for now, okay? And I'll just trim that up later so it's nice and flush. So now I want to make sure that the vent area, oh yeah, okay, so that, yeah, that'll actually look, be part of the top because of the vent. I got the louvers facing down. I'm only going to show some of these louvers. I'm going to cover them up. I'll show you. Yeah, what's a good side? Yeah, that's a pretty good side right there, I guess. So what I'll do is lay that with a little bit of an edge around it because I'm going to be laying some, I'm going to be skinning this uh, box with some 10 thou. I'll show you that in a second to hide the louver to create. So this is going to be underneath. So I'm just going to glue on a piece of 10 thou right over top of this louver and on this side and the rear side because there's only these, this corner. There's no point in building separate piece, separate piece, separate, separate. Just build the vents all as the one. It's minimal amount of material, so just build the box out of the vent material and then just skin it over. And you can create nice, neat framing, see? So here's an example. So here's some 10 thou. Scribed up. This is why you save all your scrap, right? I don't know how much I'm going to cover, but I can cut the excess off. See how that'll go in like this? Here, I'll show you now. So we want to create this. So I could just look at that and go, well, okay, maybe I'll just have it right there. It should look pretty good. All right. And I'll just glue that on. And this whole front is already built. All right, there's not much else to except for this here later you can add and then put a little bit of a trim around the top like one by 20 thou or one by 30 along the top but you don't really need it see You know, I don't mind this at the back here. It's got that sheet metal kind of look, and it just, I'm going to leave that. I like the shadow it causes. It's going to be at the back, and there might be a few pipes coming out of there, maybe. So I'm just going to leave that, that overhang, because I don't mind that, actually. So what I'm going to do is, is just square that off, then. Well, this part for now I can. You can work with this plastic almost immediately. This is a little premature, but I'm just showing you what you can get away with if you're into speed building. You can move quite quickly. Okay. So I'll just, and then I'll sand that up later. But that's pretty much the air conditioner built right there. Very simple. 
but they're not complicated, right? Air conditioners are not complicated units. Okay, I'm gonna use that relay box on the side like that. Okay, so I'll show you the finished air conditioner right here, you can see. So you can see that I used the, this photo or artist rendering to inspire this build because the dimensions are clearly not the same. I just guesstimated. I mean, this could be six feet, eight feet, five feet. I'm not really sure, to be honest. But uh, you can see I just used a ring for the top and added a little bit of rod. Uh, to create some mesh, put a strip around that to clean it up. Made this, like it's all from scrap. You know, just made up another box and cut it to shape. And uh, These are the fun little things that you make from all your scrap styrene, right? Okay, and then I'm going to mount it on the roof of the diner, but I made a little sample roof here. Uh, this is how I'm going to do the roof on the diner and I'm going to show how I do this. This is really easy to do and I'm going to t explain how to do this to get this texture very simple and this is just uh, a series of colors from Vallejo to do the tar paper which I'll probably darken a bit and then do uh, you know uh, roofing nail holes detail. I'll show that as well but uh, this is how this will go like that. Okay. The air conditioner. Okay, so I just want to show you to finish up painting this air conditioner. Now here's a little rule of thumb or a tip for you. I mean, if you want to take it as a tip, that's up to you. But whenever I want to uh, simulate or copy or represent from a photo or an artist rendering like this color for example right here like when you pick a default color like deck tan would be about as close as you can get to that but I always add quite a bit of white to the color regardless like whatever it is like whatever default color you pick and you go like this to try to match you should always add white I add about 50 percent white like ratio like not just to the bottle like whatever color it is you take another bottle you put in 50%, add another 50, whatever that volume is, it doesn't matter. As long as the ratio is 50-50. So I always add quite a bit of white to the existing color that I'm trying to represent, like in this case here. And even then, this is probably darker, watch. See that? See? It's quite a bit darker even still. So I could still add white to this and get to get closer to this, but I'm not going to worry about that. And what I did was is I painted the grills here that you can see that I modeled here with this gray XF75 IJN gray, Imperial Japanese Navy gray is what it is. And I might have even added a little bit of darker gray to it just to get to that shade. Okay. So that's why I tint my colors, because you almost always have to. But you can just shoot default colors if you want from the bottle. That's okay, too. But, you know, it's just different for everybody. Now, I've masked off the two vents. And then I sprayed this out dark black or dark brown, whatever. And then I just, I didn't bother down along here. I could just do that with a traditional brush and a wash. But all I want to do now is just basically cover this air conditioner now this color okay and I'm going to shoot just down from the top because I don't want anything on the bottom I want to leave that as shadow all right <clears throat> 